another episode of Full Turn Kids Zone at Home video series. I'm telling you, last week was really awesome. We talked about who can remember. We talked about, yes, Jericho, that's right. And we've got another exciting episode today. We've got another exciting lesson today that will help you to have, to have victory in your life. But before we go any farther, what do we got to do? We got to pray, that's right. So that means everyone bow your heads, hold your hands, close your eyes. Uh, I can see you. All right, there you go. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for this time that we have when we can come together and learn more about you. Lord, I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us today. Lord, we pray for your anointing upon every part of this lesson today. For Lord, we give you all the praise and glory. And we thank you, Father God, that you give us victory each and every day. We just give you praise. In Jesus' name, and everybody said... Amen! That's right, that's right. Well, today we've got, I don't know who we've got helping us out. I do now. Harry! 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 Harry, dude. Man, that just drives me crazy when you do that. That's not yeah. Harry's fault. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta uh, sandpaper those nails down. I got a disc sander that might help with those nails. No. No, you don't want to do that? No. Uh, maybe I'll have Harrietta, your girlfriend, help you clip those nails. Don't, don't look at me in that tone. Uh-uh. Just get to the announcements. Uh, all right, okay, Harry. Don't bring her up. Don't bring her up. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll try to be. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I won't, I promise. Thank uh, you. Maybe next week, though. It depends on how you act right now. Everything hinges on how you behave. Okay. All right. So, Harry, what's the first thing that we got going tickets. on? Tickets. Huh? Tickets. Tickets. That's right. We have tickets. There's lots of different ways that you can win tickets and earn tickets. Time, bring your Bible. Uh, I, Harry forgot. Oh, uh, yeah. If you're here on time and you bring your Bible. Offering. And you bring an offering. That's Tickers. all worth a ticket each. And your memory verse. If hey. you memorize the memory verse. But they got to be here to do that. Hey. You got to come to Kids hey. Zone. Hey. What? If they say it without the dot dot, they get two tickets. No, Harry. That's what that Harley That's D not, guy said. I know. Well, Harley D isn't always right. Anybody who drives around in a pig, on a pig, pink pig called a hog, I think that's... I'm going to tell him you said that. No. Shh. Be nice, Harry. I'll bring Harry up. All right. Fine. Oh, I love this. I love having this kind of power. It's great. <laughs> Um, okay, so we, safe we got ticket. the, oh, huh? Safe, safe ticket. ticket. That's right. We have a safe. That's what Harry said. Yes, Harry, thank you. He did say that. Yes, and we have a safe ticket. That We put a ticket in the safe, and at the end, we open the safe up and get the ticket out. And Duh. whoever's ticket that is, Harry, they win some great prizes. Harry Sometimes never wins. Big prize. Well, Harry, you keep chewing up your ticket, and we can't read it because it's all slimed out. Ah. It's not food, Harry. It's not food. <laughs> Ugh. Um, we also, our service times, i got to let you know this. Our, our service times have changed. And we are now having, we have two kid zones on Sunday morning. Two. Yes. And one's at 9 o'clock. And then the second one starts at 11 o'clock. And so we give you the choice, the option to go to either or. Or you can go to both. We've got a few kids, Harry, that go to both. What you doing, Harry? What? What? Okay, you get you look bored up there, Harry. Well, uh, I just had to know. Let, I had to let the kids know that we got the two services going on. What's oh. what am I missing? What's the next? What's the next announcement after that? T-shirts. T-shirts. That's hey. right. Hey. Oh, I'm gonna step over here. What? Harry, Harry still needs seven XL. I knew that was coming. Harry, we cannot find seven XL. Why not? There just isn't enough material out there for that. Aww. I'm telling you, it's almost, it's, it is impossible. We'd have to buy like a tent or something. You, you don't want to. Well, why you don't haven't want, you? You don't want to look back there. I mean, he pretty much consumes the whole, the whole back of that puppet state. Harry that was can't bad. help it. Yeah, I know, Harry. You, got, you like to snack too much, Harry. You're not starting this again, are no, you? No, 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 I won't go that. I won't say anything about your being big boned or anything like that. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's see, where, where do we leave off? Oh, um, we have 
Camp coming up, Harry. Yeah. Camp. Oh, you don't sound too enthused about it. Why aren't you excited about camp? Kids How is Harry going to get to go? Harry never gets to go anywhere. Well, they have a, Harry, they got a lake there with a three-story water slide that goes into the lake. And they got a big pool there. But see, Harry, if I take you with, first of all, you're going to clog up all the filters in the pool with all that hair. And you ever smell like a wet dog? You know how they, ugh. Big kids, Harry never get to have any fun. Harry's like, multiply that by 10 times and you might get close. Hey! Woo! <sighs> wet Harry is not good. Anyway, not so. Not like you're any better. Uh, anyway, we, so the kids camp is coming up. It's June 9th through the 12th. And it's only yeah, whatever. It's a it's only $150. So I mean, I'm telling you, it's money well spent. They have great chapel services, and we have activities throughout the entire day. We have Probably team competitions. Probably $500 for Harry. Yeah, team competitions and <laughs> and yeah, good food and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And Harry doesn't and, get to go. Harry, well, our bus isn't big enough for you, Harry. See. Yeah, we might Harry be able to hook a trailer. Harry knew there'd be something. Yeah, there yeah, always yeah. is. Uh, you know. Well, Harry, is there anything else? Am I missing anything? Is that it? Always. Oh, thanks, Harry. Uh, is there anything else? Share the video. Oh, yeah. Duh. Make sure and share this video with all your friends, family, enemies, whatever. Um, make sure and share it with your teachers at school and all of that, because what you're doing is you're getting the gospel out in such a funny, unique way. So make sure and share this video. Yep. We want to make sure and share the share the good news of Jesus. That's and right. That's a good way to do it, Harry. Thank you, Harry. That is awesome, dude. Yep. I appreciate your time. Yep. And uh, Harry doesn't want to go. You did good. I will not call out ha Harry. Harry yet. doesn't want to go. Harry doesn't want to go. What? No. Do you want to stay up here? Uh huh. Why do you want to stay up here? Cause Harry had to go back to her. Harrietta. Dude, I'm telling you. Well, there's a back door. Just go take the back stairways out through the back door. Harry! Run, Harry, Where run. Run, Harry, run. I hear her. Bye, Harry! Uh, all right, there goes Harry. Ah! Him and his girlfriend. Yes, I'm telling you, that is the most strange relationship I've ever seen. Anyway, well, we got to get on with things here. And I'm going to introduce a good friend of mine. And we're going to find out how team competitions went from last week. Coach Slacker, yes, come on indeed. out I'm here, back bud. Yeah, man, it was awesome. Yes, I tell yes. You, oh, we, tell we, us all about we, it. We, we had so much fun. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, we have determined, determined through lots of trial and error yeah. that fireball soccer, that's just completely too dangerous. Yeah, we, I can imagine After that. the third yeah. man down, we're yeah. just like, okay, this is, we gotta we're going to have to call up. this one. I think, I think that's wisdom. That's wisdom. Yep, yep. Yes. A, a, as, for, as for toe wrestling? Toe wrestling. Yep. Oh, yes. Yep. We, we were up. Man, we were on top. We were doing great, and then we got uh, all jammed up. Got all jammed up. They, 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 yeah, we. Yeah, okay. So we decided we're jammed out of that one, up. too. We're out oh, of that one. Oh, my goodness. Uh, now, now well, we, we are trying some two new ones just because. You oh, know, two new you, ones. you this can't, be you good. can't have, there is no downtime with Coach Slacker. No downtime. No, the, okay, the what's next, the two the new The next ones? two are shin kicking. Shin kicking. Yeah, it's what you, you, with your shin. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of a. Been there, done that. I don't That's know if you've ever seen any of those like dances back in like the 90s called a mosh pit. Yeah. Essentially, it's just a free for all. Got, Everybody, yeah, it's, yeah. you just you doing the best you can to keep them shin. I see you've got getting, you got yeah. some knee pads on. You got to get some shin pads and on. And the buddy. next one is even more dangerous. Oh, okay. Even dangerous. more dangerous than shin kicking. Okay. It's where you get these oversized pair of pants. Oversized pair of pants. Oversized pair of pants. Yeah. You put them on. Yeah. You get you one of them little rodents. You you, you heard them called a fit. Yeah. You get okay. one in each leg, and it's called ferret legging. <laughs> you don't have to do don't, nothing. Don't you don't have to know. jump I around. Wanna... You don't have to move. You <laughs> just have to survive. That's literally so all it's, you it's do. All about... They just do what they do, <laughs> and as long as you can make it without passing out, yeah. you're doing good. Oh, my goodness. I'm not sure there's any awards I... for that. Yeah. I think yeah, I think the I think I, I, I think the, the last man standing gets the tear, but I mean, you know. Yeah. Wow. 
Okay. Anyway, I'm That's here to a, talk a, about a definition. Yes, the definition. Enough, Let's enough go over the, that again. Yeah, we're going to go over We're going to review that from last week. Go ahead. Okay. The definition of victory. Now, we're talking about V8. Now, V8 stands, yep. the V stands for victory. Victory. That's right. And the 8, which would be normally, if it's an engine, it would be 8 cylinders. If it was a uh, V8, it would be a drink, like a tomato vegetable drink. Ooh, like uh, tomato soup? Yeah, it's kind of sort of like that. Ah, but this V8 ah, stands for ah. 8 weeks of talking about victory. Victory, And okay. I, I'm excited about That's this. That's I better. love okay. this. We just had a really good, last week we had a great lesson. Okay. And I can't wait to get to this one. So okay. go ahead, give us the definition of victory. The definition of victory. of victory. Here it comes, right here. It means. You heard it right from the, right from the coach. Yep. yep. It means a success in a competition or a struggle. It also means to win over an opponent or a difficult problem. A difficult problem. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not just competition, but it could be a difficult problem. It could Giving be a different, victory, yes. Victory it could be like almost like a puzzle game where oh, you gotta yeah. you gotta solve something, but you're not sure how the parts move, and you gotta kind of have victory over, over the that. puzzle. Or or it could even be like you taking a test in school. You that's know, if you true. get if you get an A, you're you that's a pretty serious victory. I'm telling you what. But in order to get the A, coach, yeah, they have to practice. They have to they have to study. They have to memorize. Oh, well, yeah, so, I mean. That's... Yeah, they got to study. You know, in order to have victory in life, you have to study this book right here. Makes the Bible. sense to that's me. Bible yeah, says, that's, yeah. The best, uh, that's the best handbook I've ever seen. That's Just right. Do you know, Coach Locker, we already got the victory. We were talking about that last week. Do you remember who gives us the victory? Yeah, I came here wanting to do something for myself and yeah. win myself a Pretty nice little, uh, you oh, know. Oh, that's a uh, pretty good looking medal there. But uh, wow. come to find out, you already. Toe said, wrestling champ. That's you pretty said cool. I already won, so yeah. I figured, well, I didn't do it. And you're like, yeah. well, but Jesus did. And, Jesus did, but and that, he gave we're talking to me. Yeah, but see, we're talking about winning spiritually in yeah. our life, being a success in life. Now, in order to do that, you know, yeah. in order to win a competition like your toe wrestling uh -huh. competition. Um, you got to exercise those toes, don't yeah. you? Yeah, you got to yeah. lift weights and, and uh, all that kind of stuff. Lots of, lots get, of get them massaged lifting. and, and uh, well, a pedicure lots. and all that kind of stuff you, to make you, them look you good. You do lots of toe lifting. Toe lifting, yes, yeah, yeah, toe, toe lifting. lifting. Yes, sir. And, and so you got to practice in order to be good and to get better at what you're supposed to do. Yeah. You know, just like you have to do that in life, you also would do that with your spiritual walk, your spiritual life. You would do that with the Bible. So... It's just as important, or more important. To more be, important. More that important. Is, All right. Well, why don't you why don't you give us the uh, we got the definition down, didn't we already? We did. The yeah. need to know. The need to the know. Need to know. Yes, Come back need. over here, coach. Okay. I'll, I will give All you right. the need to know. The need yes, to know. The need. The need to know. know for here this comes. week, it's probably the same as last week. Yeah, da, it is. Da, da, da. Our victory is already ours. We don't have to go out there and do anything for Our it. Our victory we is already ours. We have to just accept. That Except Jesus did it all for Jesus us and at said, the cross. Here you That's go. Right. Take here you it. go. Now and then we it. have to accept it, and we have to learn what those victories are in the Word, and we can walk in victory each That's and every day. That's true. That is That's very, very true. good. That's very good. So you got to practice that. Just yes. as long as, just as much you got to practice your toe exercises. I, I, I guess I take that back. Right. Then. Or There's, even more. It's so. not like you don't got to do nothing. That's right. You do have to you practice. Gotta, you got to practice. Because if you don't practice, practice praying. Yeah. Practice. Being in the Word. Yep. Yep. That's right. In order to be victorious, trying gotta, to live it out. I guess. You got to get to know God, know yep. about Him, just like you got to know the rules for the competitions. That is very true. All right. Well, uh, uh, thank you so much, you Coach know, Lacker. Welcome. I got a couple of teams over here. I'm okay. still working with. Uh, yeah. We got to we got to get our got shins all ready. Shin kickers. We, you know, and, we got to uh, got to get the and, ferrets uh, all kind of yeah, calmed down. And, 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 and uh, so make, I'm gonna I'm get over here and get uh, to work and see, right. see what I can we, do. Maybe put that ferret down. We'll no, put it. No, put the ferret down. No, yeah, no, not yet. Not till I get over there. That's a little scary. I'm telling you. All right. Well, we have a memory verse today, and I'm gonna have Mr. Matt come back up right now. Mr. Matt, I don't know where Mr. Matt is. Mr. Matt, paging Mr. Matt. Oh, there's Mr. Matt. Yeah. How does it feel to be looking right. for somebody? Well, I don't know. I, I I was looking for you all last week, remember? Oh, uh, not all last week, just the beginning. Well, yeah, and I couldn't find you. But now you, I'm here. Wait, we got a memory verse, right? We got a memory verse. 
What are we doing? Are we doing both? Or we're just doing just the one. The first, first one or the John. second one? First John 4. 5-4? Five, 5-4. Four. Five, four. Yes. 5-4. Yep. See, you said it right. There you go. Good ah, job. I Good did. job. I blew it. No, I you said it. it right. Dot, dot. No, 5-4. You had it right. I can't believe what you did. Lord, so, forgive me. Okay. Well, you did it right. Oh, okay, whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> so the memory verse is, for whatever is born of God is victorious over the world. Victorious over the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world. Even our faith. our faith. And that's 1 John 5, 4. Where does our faith come from? Right there. The Bible, you're standing right in front of it. The rep, right there. Yep, faith that's comes it. by the word. Hearing. Hearing the word. That's right. Should I do it again? Yeah, go ahead. Do it okay, again. one more time. One, more, one time. more time. For whatever is born of God is victorious over the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world. Even our faith. That's right. And that's 1 John 5, 4. Dot, dot. It's not 1 John 5, 4, dot, dot. It's just 1 John 5, 4. Dot, dot, 4. No. How could it be? Five, how could five, it be? First five. John five four dot dot four. Uh, we go through this every week. <laughs> yeah, ah! I know, and you still don't say it right. Uh, well, I'm sure that you have some place to go. Oh, I think oh, I hear yeah, your mom right, calling. All right. She hasn't called me. Well, no, actually, I talked to her earlier today. Yeah, but. see. All right, see. see I a hark. Remember, I kids. First John five four. Bye. Oh dot dot. Oh man. All right. Well, I, I can't remember. What, what are we doing next here? Oh, oh, here comes Miss Aaron. I think I know. I think I know. I think, think Miss Aaron can tell us. What, what are we doing next, Miss Aaron? Praise and worship. Praise and worship. Of course. I love praise and worship. You like praise and worship? Yes, I do. I sure I hope so because you do it for me in kids' church all the time. So I, I really appreciate you doing that, too. That's really awesome. We so do it so much my so three-year-old can sing them. Wow, that's good. That's good. <laughs> all right. Well, I like that. So what is our awesome song this week? Jesus, What a Friend. Oh, kind of like the Superman song thing. It is the Superman I mean, I, song. I, I, yeah, I, I know, you I call, call it the Superman, Superman song. song <laughs> Jesus, What a Friend. So, all right, let's go, guys. Get, get up on your feet. Everybody get up. Come on. Stand up. We're going to do I, If I got to do this, you got to do this, too. All right? Okay. Yeah, that's going to be go. funny. All right, hit it, it, Maestro. Superman faster than the Flash, bigger than the Hulk, man, Jesus, what a friend. 
Control of Van Superman faster than the Flash Bigger than the Hulk Man Jesus, what a friend I mean, I got this right. Yeah, th that's yeah, yeah. the only one you get right. No, listen to you. <laughs> oh, man. But I, I love that song. That's I do, really too. Good, we'll have Jesus to is our later. friend. Jesus is your friend. All right. Yes, well, thank you, Miss Aaron. You were very welcome. For helping me out with that. So we will see you later, maybe. Yeah, I got to go find some more songs to do. All right. Bye. Go ahead. She is our praise and worship leader on Sunday mornings at the 9 and the 11 o'clock. So I really, really do appreciate it. All that she does. Yes, I do. All right, Mr. Matt, come on up here. We've got a Bible fact See, today. See, look, you didn't even have to look Bible for me this fact time. Today. I know. This is really, you're getting better at Wait, that. Don't we have a Bible fact every week? We have a Bible fact every week. Yeah. Yeah. So it's time but for it's the one for today, one. right? Yes, that's right. Okay, cool. All right. Has We're something on the same to do, page, all right. Has something to do with our lesson today. Doesn't it usually? Yeah, it usually does. Nine times out of ten? Yeah, nine times out of in ten. In that ballpark? In that ballpark. No, there's no ballpark in, in the Bible. There might have been. I, I've never read about a ballpark. You guys read about a ballpark? I haven't read a ballpark. Anyway, go ahead. Give us the Bible fact. No, no. It wasn't a no, ballpark. No. It was a basketball court. Remember they were all in the King's Court? Oh. <laughs> uh, got it. Go ahead. Okay, so the Bible fact for today is the Bible said that the army of the Midianites were as numerous as the sand on the seashore. Wow, they, that's pretty numerous. I know, right? Sand on the seashore. I... I tried doing that one time, Mr. Matt. Mm -hmm. I got tired of, uh, about 15 minutes into it. Yeah, well, could you imagine? I didn't get close. I mean, it was still, I was just like. Well, see, okay, imagine if I you're facing, like uh, imagine you're facing an army like that. Yeah. Like Gideon was. Yeah. And he's only got 300 guys. Wait. Yeah. Wait. He yeah. Had, no, he had a lot more to start with, though. Well, yeah. I don't remember but, he had like over 20,000 guys. Yeah, but it ended up getting whittled down to 300. Yeah. <laughs> And it's he's the, supposed it, to take on the it, Midianite army? Yeah, it's in the Bible story today. Oh, well, we better go check it out. Let's check it out right now. I can't wait. Let's watch. God's story. Gideon. So part of God's story is about a man named Gideon. And it begins like this. Israel, God's special family, had turned against the one real God and worshipped idols. They had forgotten how God had loved and cared for them and needed a reminder that he was the one in charge. So God took away the Israelites' farms for seven long years. Whenever the Israelites planted crops, God would let another nation called the Midianites sweep through and camp on Israel's land, ruining everything that was growing there. But even though his own family had forgotten him, God still loved them deeply. So, at the end of the seven years, God appeared to a young Israelite named Gideon. God said he was going to free the Israelites with Gideon's help. Gideon, however, wasn't so sure, so he asked God to prove himself by performing a series of miracles. Gideon said, If the fleece is wet with dew in the morning but the ground is dry, then I will know that you're going to help me rescue Israel as you promised. That's what happened. Just to be sure, the next night, Gideon asked God to do the opposite, make the fleece dry and make the ground wet. And God did it. Next, he even sent a sign through an angel. Gideon was finally convinced that God was in his corner, so he called together an army to fight against the Midianites. Now, normally, having lots of people is a good thing when you're about to battle. But like I said, God does things a bit differently. He told Gideon that the Israelites had too many soldiers. If they won now, God knew the Israelites would say it was because of their own strength and brag about it. So, 
God wanted Gideon to have a smaller army. Gideon was nervous, but he did as God asked, which is always a good idea, by the way. He told his men that if they were afraid, they could return home. With that, 22,000 soldiers left, leaving Gideon with about 10,000. For you math whizzes, that's two thirds of his army just poof, gone. Even after all that, the army was still too big. So God told Gideon to take the soldiers down to the water to drink, and then send home the soldiers who drank out of the stream like dogs. Again, Gideon did what God asked and was now left with only 300 soldiers. God knew Gideon was probably worried, so he told him to sneak down to the enemy camp where Gideon heard soldiers talking about a crazy dream where a loaf of bread rolled into the Midianite camp and over their tent. One soldier said that could only mean that Gideon would triumph over them. Gideon returned to his own camp confident that he would win the battle. He divided his men into three groups and gave them each a trumpet and a jar with a torch inside. Not usually what you bring to a fight, but God had a plan. Gideon's army reached the edge of the Midianite camp and then went into action. They blew their trumpets, smashed their jars, and shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. And don't forget, they did all of this without a single weapon in their hands. Terrified, the Midianites fled, accidentally attacking each other as they went. In fact, they ran so far from the battlefield that other Israelites were able to capture and defeat the leaders of the Midianites. With the enemy leaders gone and their army running away, God had saved Israel, just like he said he would. And that's the story of Gideon. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Israel turned away from God. God reminded them he was in charge. God said he would save Israel. He would use Gideon. God performed miracles for Gideon. Gideon gathered an army. God made it smaller, much smaller. Soldiers had a dream. Gideon's army surprised their enemies. The Midianites ran away. God used Gideon to save Israel. And that's a part of God's story. Hey, did you like that story? I'm telling you, Gideon was someone special. He took and he listened to God. Now, there's another instant here where God tells Gideon to do something that's really different. I mean, here you've got a Midianite army that is numbered like the sands in the sea, the sands on the seashore. That's a lot of sand. Man, I'm telling you, I, that'd be a lot of guys. And he, so God whittles it down to 300 men. And so do you remember what in the story, what God had the men take? There was three items. Yeah, it was a trumpet and it was a what? A, yes, a jar and a torch. Yes, it was a torch. And so that's what they're going to fight with. Now, these are mighty men of God, men of valor. They know how to use a spear and a sword and all of that. And yet they're supposed to use what? A trumpet, a jar, and a torch to fight against this massive, massive army. Well, see, God had already had it in the works. You know, in our story today, we found out that God had already planted dreams in them and put fear into these soldiers' hearts about the, the Israel, Israelites and how they were going vic to have victory even before they even came in. So what did Gideon do? He put these 300, he split them up into three groups of 100 each and put them on hills around surrounding the camp. And when he did that, then he told them, okay, I want you guys to all blow the trumpets at the same time. They blew the trumpets. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been like in a canyon or whatever, and, and I've, I've yelled, what happens when you shout, hey, and it goes, hey, 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 hey. What is that? Yeah, it's an echo. That's right. And I'm sure when they blew those trumpets, it started echoing off all those face rock in the canyon. The, the many nights were camped down in the down below the hills in the canyon area, in the valley. And then, I mean, it's just echoing. And then they wake up and they're all, all this confusion's going on because how many of you ever woke up out of a dead sleep and you're like, oh, I don't know where I'm at. Ah! And you kind of get startled. Well, that's the way they were. And then all of a sudden they, they break all these jars so it sounds like 
thousands of men marching and it's echoing off the walls with the trumpets blasting. And then they raise the torches that are lit. And, they, and the Midianites look up and they see all these torches. It's in the middle of the night. The night is dark. And there's confusion. There's confusion in the camp. God creates confusion. And because of all that confusion, they started killing each other. And they started running every direction. And they, they ran and tried to, and the Israelites chased that. Israel, look, say that ten times fast. The Israelites chased them and, and won the victory because of God helped them win that victory by putting fear in their hearts. And see, God had it all planned out. And you're thinking, that is the weirdest thing. And I'm sure all 300 of those guys and Joshua were probably thinking, hmm, this is strange. But just like in Jericho, when they defeated Jericho, they didn't use any weapons. They didn't use any battering rams so that we heard from last week. They just walked around the city seven times, and then they blew trumpets and shouted at the walls. And what happened? The earthquake came. The walls came down. What happened this week? I mean, they started to shout, and they had the trump. They had they had the torches up, and they busted the clays, and the trumpets are blowing, and the confusion hit, and they killed each other. And and they, the Israelites, with 300 men, had complete victory over uh, a Midianite army that was numbered like the sands in the sea. Oh my goodness! And see, God can do the same thing for you. Sometimes the things that you come up against in life, problems and issues you come up against in life, will look daunting, will look like the Midianite army, so vast. And, but, you know, God's got a plan. And see, when you do God's plan, you can't take the credit for it. You can't take the credit. That's what God wants. God wants the glory for what, what's going to happen in this victory. So in the victories in your life, God wants the glory. So anytime you have a victory in your life, you better go back to God and say, thank you, Father God, for giving me the victory. And be obedient to what he tells you to do, even if it sounds really strange. And just like it did for the, the um, Israelites with Gideon. And uh, pretty awesome victory, though. But God can do the same thing for you. And, but you know what you got to have? you got to have God where? In your heart, that's right. So for those of you who have not accepted Jesus Christ into your life, not invited him to come into your life, this is your opportunity. So I want everyone to bow your heads, fold your hands, close your eyes, and what we're going to do right now is we're going to, make, we're going to say a prayer, and I want you to repeat this prayer after me if you've never asked Jesus into your heart. So get ready. Here we go. Dear Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. Help me to live for you, Lord. I pray, God, that you would help me to have ears to hear so that I could walk each day in victory. And I thank you, Father God, that you are now walking with me and that you are my best friend. Help me to live for you and always hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Well, that was good. That was good. That was good. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We have one more thing to do. One more thing to do before I go today. And I bet you guys know what it is. And we've been going through it every week. And what's the last thing that we say before we go? Love God and love people. Now, it's important to love God because if you don't love God, you're not going to love people. So love God first and then love people, which is your neighbors, your kids at school, the teachers, parents, uncles and aunts, cousins, brothers and sisters even, yeah. So love God, love people. All right, we will see you next week for another exciting episode of how you too can be victorious over the things that the enemy tries to throw your way. All right, see you later. Gotta go. Okay, gotta get ready for church. <laughs>